1997, I found myself at the revival at TBN in Nashville, and I stood up in 1997, and I said, where the church is going is into the revelation of the kingdom of heaven. This was 1997, over 20, what was that, 26, 25 years ago. And when I said that, and the people began to write to me all over the nation and around the world, what is this kingdom stuff you're talking about? What is this kingdom stuff? Kingdom stuff. Well, now everybody knows it's kingdom stuff. And it's not to say anything about me. Many other people were preaching it. It's just that you kind of caught where heaven was trying to take the church. And, and so we had to repent because a revelation was coming. Because we were stuck in church. When God was trying to get us out the church and into the world. So the revelation of the kingdom came. And then men were raised up like Lance Wall now and all these other men of God preaching about the seven mountains and how we've got to get into the mountains because the kingdom is not in the church. <laughs> The church is actually a part of the kingdom. The kingdom supersedes the church. And Satan was just real happy to get us stuck in these four walls. But when we start breaking out, saying we're coming to business and education, and we're coming everywhere to subdue every other mountain underneath the authority of the kingdom. That's the age we are in right now. It is a kingdom age. But now let me tell you what has to happen to us. If we don't get our identity right, we will never function in our authority. In other words, you will never release what's in you until you get a revelation of who you are. And so this is where the body of Christ is coming. This is where we're going. This is, you're going to hear more people being raised up, raised up, raised up, talking about who we are, what we have, sonship. We're going to move into this thing. And so what happened last night, most of you have heard those revelations. Some of you heard it for the first time. Some of you heard it in a way you never heard it. Because heaven is trying to advance the kingdom here. And he brought a revelation to you so that now you can take it by force. In other words, now we got to move into it. We got to move into it. And so he brings a revelation and then he finds a people that will move into that revelation. That's how the kingdom advances. That how it, that's how it advances in your life individually. God moves you into a revelation and then you got to press into it. And then he moves you to another revelation and then you got to press into it. Then he gives you another revelation and you got to press into it. So he moves you from revelation to revelation. That's why the Bible declares that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's how God moves your life along is he gives you a word and then he gives you another word and then he gives you another word and then when you look up at the end of your life it is just a sum total of the revelations that God gave you that moved you from point A to point B. Boy this is apostolic stuff this morning. I, I don't know how I got on all this. And so, and so what he's trying to do now is shift this whole region into another dimension of the kingdom. He's trying to move you into a higher dimension. And so now let's press deeper. Let's seize this revelation. Last night we talked about the resurrection and how there needed to be further revelation about the resurrection. 
that the resurrection was not just about a man physically coming out of the grave. Many people had come out of the grave physically. We talked about the widow of Zarephath. You remember Elijah came, Elijah came and said, make me a cake first. And then they did that. But after that, the son died. Elijah took the son, laid him on his bed, stretched himself out three times over the boy. And the Bible says, and he revived. And then Elisha, that was Elijah. Then Elisha with the Shunammite woman, they built him a place to stay. And then after that, her son died. And she said, man of God, why are you playing with me? I didn't ask for a son. You remember she was the one that the, that, the, that the servant asked, what can be done for her? She doesn't have a child. Elisha says, by this time next year, you're going to have a son. And by that time next year, she had a son. But then the son died, and the woman had an attitude. She said, I didn't ask for one. You prophesied one, gave him to me, and then he died. Elisha came, stretched himself out over the boy. The boy sneezed seven times and came back to life. Many people had come back from the dead physically. But why is Jesus called the firstborn from the dead? Last night you got the revelation. It is because he was the firstborn from the dead spiritually. That the resurrection of Jesus was a spiritual resurrection. He was resurrected before he ever picked up his body. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Yes, he was resurrected before he went back up through the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, picked up his body and came out. And so his body was resurrected. I want you to I want to be clear. It was resurrected a glorified body. Matter of fact, his body was so resurrected that once he was resurrected, both spiritually and physically, he just walked through the wall. <laughs> he, he, just, he just walked right on through the wall because he was in a resurrected dimension. But the emphasis on the resurrection is not on the physical side because many had came back to life physically. But what Jesus did was conquer death. 